Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Recently I got a message from a patron that asked me to cover the late Jurassic Salurosaur Ornitholestes, which I thought was such a good idea that it made me realise I should do more deep dive into single genera rather than just whole families. So consider this the start of a new series that I'm going to call Paleo Profiles. Please feel free to suggest ideas in the comments and on my Patreon. Now back to the main focus of the video. Ornitholestes is a relatively famous small theropod from the late Jurassic Morrison formation of Western North America, with this being down to its starring role in the second episode of Walking with Dinosaurs. Here, the animal was depicted as a somewhat bird-like, agile carnivore that terrorised the main group of Diplodocus hatchlings soon after their birth. Interestingly, although the series was in production at a time in which the first feathered dinosaur fossils were being unearthed in China, Walking with Dinosaurs chose to put a sparse covering of protofeathers on Ornitholestes rather than on the Dromaeosaurs, which even in the late 90s were considered close relatives of birds. While the genus is still depicted as mostly scaly, it is nice that the production chose to show some sort of quill-like integument used as a display feature. However, aside from the shrink wrapping and pronated hands, which were considered accurate during the 90s. The Ornitholestes is portrayed as possessing a small, bright blue horn on its nose. This was based on Gregory S. Paul's suggestion that an area of upward curving broken bone near the nostrils indicated the presence of a small nasal horn. However, later studies in the 2000s disproved this. Despite its fame, Ornitholestes is only known from a single badly crushed partial specimen recovered from the brushy basin member of the Morrison Formation, with the specific site being the Bone Cabin Quarry of Wyoming. Dating to roughly 154 million years ago, these remains consisted of a single skull, forelimbs, and parts of the hind limbs, in addition to numerous fragments of the vertebral column, ribs, and tail. The holotype was uncovered in the year 1900, being the first new species of theropod dinosaur to be found in the 20th century. The specimen was officially described in 1903 by... <sighs> Henry Fairfield Osborne, who seems to be a recurring element in these paleo videos. Osborne christened the genus Ornitholestes, meaning bird thief, which was chosen as a reference to the animal's bird-like skeleton, in addition to Osborne's suggestion that it may have hunted early bird relatives similar to Archaeopteryx, even though none of these are known from the Morrison Formation. Overall, the genus measured about 2 metres or 6.6 .6 feet long and possessed a relatively light build, long tail, and a somewhat boxy skull that was strongly constructed for a small theropod. Its weight has been placed between 11 and 15 kilograms, or up to 33 pounds, being somewhat comparable to a modern red fox or jackal in size. The teeth at the front of the jaws were quite conical and lacking in serrations, while those at the rear of the jaws were curved and blade-like, indicating that small prey items were grabbed with the front teeth and then ripped apart by those at the rear. The eyes were proportionally large, perhaps suggesting that Ornitholestes might have been a nocturnal or crepuscular hunter, although this remains somewhat speculative. A wide variety of small vertebrates would have been on the menu, including frogs, salamanders, a variety of lizards, and a range of mammalia forms, including the eutriconodonts, multituberculates, and dryolestoids. As shown in Walking with Dinosaurs, Ornitholestes likely fed on hatchling dinosaurs as well, which would have been commonplace in the environment. Although often thought of as an agile, fast-running animal, the lower leg bones appear to have been relatively short, meaning that Ornitholestes was probably an ambush hunter rather than a sustained runner, lurking in the undergrowth before pouncing on unsuspecting prey. The second digits of the feet were larger than the others, with John Ostrom suggesting that these may have borne a sickle claw similar to those of dromaeosaurs, although the holotype is not well preserved enough to be certain of this. The forelimbs, on the other hand, were relatively elongated and flexible, probably being utilised for grabbing and holding small animals. Ornitholestes was definitely a salurosaur, although its place within this lineage is somewhat uncertain. By the 2010s, most studies found this animal to be more derived than the tyrannosauroids and compsognathids being a close relative of the many raptoriforms, a very diverse clade that contained everything from the ornithomimosaurs to therizinosaurs, from oviraptorosaurs to modern birds. If this was the case, then Ornitholestes may resemble the common ancestor of all of these groups, and, unlike the depiction walking with dinosaurs, probably possessed a full coat of hair-like protofeathers on the body, 
with longer, more derived feathers present on the forelimbs and possibly near the tip of the tail. Interestingly, a 2021 study by Kimberly Chappelle et al. re-examined the Ornitholestes holotype, utilising modern computer tomography. Noting that the heavily crushed nature of the skull made the genus difficult to classify, their study corrected for this deformation, finding that Ornitholestes was the most basal member of Oviraptorosauria of all things. Which, if true, is super fascinating. This placement was supported by 14 anatomical traits, including a serangular that is longer than the dentary, a short maxillary and dentary tooth rows, as well as a procumbent dentary and premaxillary teeth. This study also found the bizarre bat wing scan sauriopterids to be early diverging oviraptorosaurs as well, filling in the notable gap in the fossil record. As members of Aviolae and Troodontidae are known from the late Jurassic, it therefore follows that the more basal oviraptorosaurs must also have diverged by this time, although the oldest definitive representatives hail from the early Cretaceous. Regardless of its relationships, Ornithonestes has only been found at the Bone Cabin Quarry site in Wyoming. Other dinosaurs recovered from this locale include Diplodocus, Apatosaurus, Allosaurus and Stegosaurus which would have inhabited what was then a broad, flat floodplain, crisscrossed by numerous rivers. The climate was warm, semi-arid, and relatively similar to modern savannas, although the composition of the paleoflora was very different, being dominated by gallery forests composed of gymnosperms like conifers, as well as ginkgos, tree ferns, and cycads. Given its range of adaptations, Ornithonestes probably inhabited the gallery forests and low-lying swamps, areas that would have been teeming with small prey. Relatively basal salurosaurs such as this, while common in the Morrison Formation, appear to have declined during the early Cretaceous, at least on the northern continent, when the more derived Maniraptoriforms underwent a significant diversification event, leading to the Ornithomimosaurs, Alverosaurs, Therizinosaurs, and members of Peneraptora, which included the possible Oviraptorosaur relatives of Ornitholestes. Regardless of its phylogeny, it is probable that all of these groups probably developed from ancestors that were at least somewhat similar to Ornitholestes, making this animal a sign of things to come in the Cretaceous. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the pretty mammal-like cynodonts of the late Permian and Triassic, so until then I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!